Hey everybody, Derek here. I'm here to bring you another video for our Walking Dead countdown to the season 5 premiere. We are exactly two weeks away from our upcoming uh, fifth season premiere on October 12th. Getting very excited. I can't wait to see what they have uh, to offer us. Hopefully uh, sometime before that we're going to get more information about... Um, the Walking Dead, you know, some of the things that are coming up in it, some more speculation. And I'm also hoping that we're going to get a new webisode series coming out uh, in October. Uh, the last two were released on the 1st of October, so I'm anticipating that they may release the new one on October 1st. They may not. And I, I've been searching and I haven't found any information yet about whether they actually are or not. I don't remember if they actually um, did say that they were going to release one uh, the past three times that they have, um, but I'm hoping that we're going to see a webisode. That definitely helps carry us over in, gives us a little taste of The Walking Dead, so I'm really hoping that we see one of those. But um, tonight's video is actually not about uh, our current series, Walking Dead. Instead, it's about the spinoff that um, they've been saying that they're going to make. I believe that they're saying that they're going to either start making it in 2015 or 2016. I'm I'm not sure. They kind of play around with the dates a little bit, but we may be seeing um, one very soon. I think that they're even, again, they're saying that it's going to be within the next year or two that we're going to see the spinoff. And something that they did was they released the casting call for six of the characters that they're going to cast in the Walking Dead spinoff, which gives a couple of ideas about who these characters are going to be. And I'm going to share them with you, you know, uh, read the descriptions that they give and give my thoughts on who I think that this might uh, pertain to, um, what it may mean for the spinoff, and a couple of other things about it. So uh, just in case, again, you're a person who doesn't want to know these things, you always like going into something fresh, hey, kudos to you. I wish that I had that um, restraint, but anytime I need to find something out, I, I just can't. You know, you dangle something in front of me. I'm going to grab it, you know, um, and I, I enjoyed uh, finding out about this. Definitely gave me a lot of insight. But in case you're somebody that uh, doesn't want to know, uh, again, this is going to be uh, full of spoilers because it's going to introduce characters from the spinoff. So if you don't want to know, exit out of the video now. Okay. So the first two characters are actually a father and son pair. Kind of like how we see with Rick and Carl. Now, whether that is going to be a good thing or not, it's hard to say. Um, but I think the father-son dynamic definitely works for The Walking Dead now, you know, with Rick and Carl. And I think that we're going to see um, perhaps that this may work just as well. Um, their names are Sean Cabrera and Cody Cabrera. And it says for Sean, Sean's the father. It says he's a Latino male, early 40s. A good man trying to do right by everyone in his life. So we're seeing that, um, you know, he's kind of like Rick. Right at the beginning, that's who Rick was. Rick was willing to help people. He helped Morgan and uh, Dwayne. He helped the people in his group. He's become very connected with people in his, you know, so-called family now. You know, all these people in his group are, he sees them as family. And I think we're going to see a lot of, you know, Rick's qualities in him, but not exactly like Rick. We need to have some kind of differences, um, but at least we know that he is a he is a good man, as they say. And we're going to see, you know, that kind of a leader who's willing to put himself before others, which is definitely going to make a great leadership quality about him. And then we have Cody, who is Sean's smart and rebellious teenage son. They describe him though as the angriest kid in town. So what does that mean? Does that mean that he's just you know, known for his violent outbursts in school, you know, maybe he just yells at the teachers all the time, or is he, you know, violent in nature, you know, does, is he that kind of guy who snaps and will beat the living daylights out of you, because there's different kinds of angry, I mean, I, there's the shouting angry, and there's the I'm going to kick your rear end angry, you know, there's a difference, and, um, you know, I think that it would definitely be very interesting to see the, the kind of relationship we have, because this seems to be an older child, and I think that that's something that's very important going into The Walking Dead, if you want to separate it from the actual Walking Dead, because Carl was a little, excuse me, Carl was a little kid, and I think it makes a difference, you know, having a little kid in the zombie apocalypse versus a teenage son starting out, and if he already has a temper, 
then you may see more of father and son clashing. So I'm very interested to see how that's going to work out, you know, because I think that um, a father-son relationship is definitely something that's always interesting to explore, and especially in the zombie apocalypse, how these two are going to test each other. Now, we don't know whether there's a mother in the picture or not. Um, again, these are just rules that they're casting now. There may be and there may not be. So, But those are the two right there. And then there's another family pair. that No, actually uh, three people in a family that they're casting. And those individuals are called Nancy Tompkins, Nick Tompkins, and Ashley Tompkins. And Nancy is a 30 – she's in her mid-30s. She's a single mom of two kids. Uh, Nick and Ashley, and it says that she looks like the girl next door, but there's an edge to her. So definitely exciting, you know, to see, like, you know, what kind of an influence will she be on her children? Um, because, you know, you see parents acting and reacting in different ways around their kids in the zombie apocalypse, you know, wanting to protect them. So she may be that, you know, uh, good mother that, you know, is the sweetest thing in the world, but the moment that we get into the zombie apocalypse, she's going to pounce at the you know, the quickest second on whatever's threatening her kids or herself or whatever. So I'm definitely interested. You know, I think that this is a very good idea. I'm interested to see what they have uh, to offer from this. And we have uh, Nick Tompkins, who they describe as Nancy's screwed up teenage son. He's too old to stay home, but too scared to flee. So what does it mean to be screwed up? You know, definitely is a very vague term. Because we don't necessarily know if this is the screwed up in the sense that, you know, he's uh, like a drug addict. I mean, again, I don't want to offend anybody, you know, when when I say these things. You just – you try to think of what, what exactly do people think of when they mean screw-ups. And again, it might just be a vague term because, again, screw-up is definitely something that you can attribute to so many different things. And I don't know if they necessarily mean that – you know, he's screwed up in the sense that he's a, you know, he might be a drug addict. He might be, um, you know, one of those uh, shut-in people. I don't know. It doesn't necessarily mean that I think he's a screw-up. Again, I think it's just um, th they're trying to portray him maybe as, maybe it's just that the mother thinks that he's a screw-up. It might not necessarily mean that the child, Nick, is actually a screw-up. Um, but he just may not be a, the kind of person that, is able to go out in the world. He might be, again, like somebody who stays in their room all the time. Um, and when the zombie apocalypse breaks out, he just doesn't know what to do. So there's a lot of possibilities there. But again, I don't want to stereotype, you know. Um, screw up is definitely a very, it's not a term that you can really pinpoint necessarily. And it's one that if you're not careful with, you can be offensive. So I don't want to go too in depth into that because I don't want to offend anybody. Again, I'm just reading off of here. And I don't, I don't want to um, necessarily portray something that is not necessarily the case. But again, definitely sounds like a very interesting character. And maybe, who knows, you know, having more kids in this one that are teenagers, you may see them clash in many ways or grow. Or you may even see relationship possibilities here. I mean, Cody and Ashley might get together because they, they say Ashley is level-headed, um, is the daughter of Nancy. She loves her mom, but it's time to get out of Dodge. So maybe it's just, you know, she's she's definitely smart, um, but she's ready to go on with her life. You know, maybe this is a very close-knit family in many ways. And, um, you know, she she loves her family, but she's ready to have a life of her own. So we may see that she's forced to stay once the zombie apocalypse hits and what exactly is going to be the result of that. So an interesting family dynamic. I... I I look at it in both ways because in one way I'm excited that they're doing a family thing and on the other hand it can be risky because again some it was nice seeing the Rick, Lori, Shane, Carl type of storyline but it can also get very dull um, or too complex to the point where we're not concerned about that. We're concerned about surviving in a zombie apocalypse. So if they're able to now, on the other hand, though, if they're able to spin it in a sense of people changing and watching your family change, that can be a good storyline. Like, you know, like when Rick saw Carl doing X, Y, and Z, seeing his son grow up. If we, you know, we might see Sean noticing that Cody does things that he never thought he, his son was capable of, or you may see that some of these characters evolve into somebody that is completely different from what their family thinks of them. 
and it may result in, you know, disbelief that their family could actually be that way. So again, it can be done both ways. Um, and then I'll, I'll give a couple more thoughts at the end on this, but there's one more character that they have um, introduced and it's Andrea Chapman. And they say that she's in her forties, somewhat wilted flower child and has retreated to the outskirts of the city to recover after a horrible marriage. So I'm assuming it's a different kind of Andrea. I don't think that this is Laurie Holden's Andrea. Um, just because, you know, I don't think that Andrea was in her 40s. I think that she was in her early 30s or something like that. And um, we don't know if Andrea was married. But I don't think that it's, the again, the Andrea that we know of in, this, in the, uh, our uh, original Walking Dead uh, TV series or comic books. I think it's a different Andrea. And definitely seems very interesting. Like, I don't think that she's actually going to be a part of the group initially. Um, I mean, she may just be that kind of person who's, uh, she's alone, she doesn't have any ties, and that can be the one perfect way of surviving in a zombie apocalypse when you don't have to worry about somebody else. And that's the truth, I mean, for some people. Not caring or not having anybody to lose in a zombie apocalypse can make you stronger and make you not be afraid to lose things. Um, so th that may be very interesting to explore, and maybe these characters characters will run into each other as the time goes on. Uh, so I'm very interested to see what they have. I think they have some very good potential in these characters. Um, a couple of things that I hope to see from the spinoff, though. One, I really hope that it starts right at the beginning of the zombie apocalypse. That's something that I think is important. I mean, the season... Excuse me. Season one of the original Walking Dead started like about a month or so after the original zombie apocalypse hit. And I've always wanted to see like day one, this is what happens. Because I think that you can take part of the episode. Like I'm, I'm assuming that they would make this like a 90 minute episode or something um, in order to help establish everything. And I think that what they can do is, is they can take the first, you know, 15, 20 minutes and establish who these characters are. And then all of a sudden, bam, here's the zombie apocalypse. Now what are you going to do? And showing them in the early days of the zombie apocalypse and how it affects them. Because I think that we would see different kinds of, you know, interactions. We would see different kinds of character development. And I think that we as the audience would then become more interested in it. Because, again, the spinoff can either be a great success or it can be a failure. I mean, there's been lots of spinoffs that have been successful. You know, you look back in time. I mean, let's face it. They had three CSIs at one point. They have three NCISs now that are pretty much successful. Three Law and Orders. I mean, sky's the limit when it comes to, you know, making a great series. And I think that you could have two or three different Walking Deads on that could um, be successful. And you may turn it into something bigger than what you originally thought it was going to be. And because of the fact that it's something new, it could lead us to be more interested in it. Because there's no way for us to really predict it. Yeah, you can kind of predict The Walking Dead now because we have the comics. And while the comics aren't necessarily exactly the same, nonetheless, you look at a lot of you know the similarities. And you know that certain things are going to happen. I think many of us predicted that Shane would die in season two. I think many of us, you know, predicted that they would find the prison and what would happen at the prison, a couple of different things, and the way that the governor and Rick were going to come together. Yeah, we knew these overarching plot lines. We just didn't know how we were going to get there yet. So that's the difference. Now here, though, you have completely different characters, and there's no way to predict it. There's nothing that we can, you know, refer to. So I think they can definitely make that successful and they can run with that because we won't necessarily have a bored audience as a result of that. Now, if they do it right, I think they have great potential. I trust in them. I'm going to watch it, and I'm really hoping that we're going to see a great spinoff series that may lead to more. There could be three Walking Deads. It is possible, and I think that it would be nice to see. You know, If they have great storylines and they can make it work, I say run with it. So. Uh, again, thank you everybody for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. Feel free to subscribe. I have more videos coming, and anytime you want to suggest a video topic, don't be afraid to do so. I love uh, getting suggestions. So thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.